I'm going to talk a little bit about the decibel scale for measuring how loud sounds are. This is a classic example of a logarithmic scale. Um, and the other interesting thing is that when I tried to write decibel just now, it ended, I ended up typing devil bells, which is, so, I don't know, there's some sort of satanic uh, backwards recording going on here. So um, we have, here's a list of a bunch of sources of sound from loud to very soft. And one measure of that is the intensity in how many watts per square meter that delivers, say, to your eardrum. Now, your eardrum is not nearly a square meter, so you're not going to get this many watts, but that's really an immense amount of power just to be delivered th purely through sound for one square meter, 100 watts. Like It's like a, a very decent light bulb worth of power. So that's, understandably, a very, very loud sound. Um, and the fundamental thing is that these things vary over a huge range of magnitudes, and so we want a more convenient scale. There's also this nice psychological fact that, in fact, we don't perceive a jet takeoff as being 100 trillion times more loud than the threshold of hearing. We perceive it as being a lot louder, but not that much. And so, in fact, our psychology roughly actually does a logarithmic scale. And so we're, I'm going to say that again once we get the, the scale here. So the if you look at these numbers, I put in the numbers, and the rule is simply that if you multiply by 10 in the intensity, like going from here to here, you add 10 to the, to the decibels. Or like here, you multiply by 10 here, you add 10. You multiply by 100, oh, you add 20. If you multiply by 1,000 from here to here, you add 30. Another way to say it is that if you add 1 to the exponent here, you add 10 to the decibel number. Okay, so that suggests that a logarithm is involved, and that's exactly what's going on. So let's try and figure it out just from these numbers. Um, so we've, if you just take the log of i, that seems like the simplest thing you could do. That would be 2, 1, 0. This is log base 10, of course. So it's just stripping off the exponent. Well, that has the key property already that multiplying on this scale corresponds to adding here. So multiplying by 10 corresponds to adding 1. But there's two problems. One is that it doesn't give you the right place for 0. The 0 is up here, and the 0 is supposed to be down here for the decibel level, which makes sense. 0 as the threshold of hearing is a kind of a nice thing to have. And the scale isn't right. You add 1 here, you add 10 here. But that's not that complicated. There's still a linear relationship between these guys. If I add 1 here, I add 10 here. That's a straight line graph. We just have to figure out what the straight line graph is. So in other words, we can conjecture that b is just log i times some mystery slope plus some mystery number. Um, calling it b might be, like calling it little b might be a little bit misleading. Actually, let's call it b sub 0. OK. So let's see if we can figure out what that is. We just need to figure out this slope and the intercept. OK, well, we've got some points. We know that when log i is 0, then b is 120. So we got 120 is, and actually, you know what? I'm going to do it in a smarter way. Let's see if we can figure out the slope. So you might want to pause it and actually figure out m and b naught on your own, whatever method. Um, but let's just figure out the slope. When log i goes up by 1, like here to here, or here to here, or here to here, b goes up by 10. That's the slope. That's how you measure slope. When you have, have one variable going up by 1 and the other variable goes up by 10, the slope is 10. OK, so that's not a mystery. We didn't really have to do any complicated algebra to figure that out. And now we just have one unknown, and we just put in one point. And so let's just put in where log i equals 0. So here, um, 120 is 10 times log i, which is 0. Oh, hey. OK, so that's 0 plus b sub 0. OK, so one way to write the scale is the decibel level is just 10 times the logarithm of the intensity uh, plus um, 120. Because 10 log i would just be taking this and multiplying it by 10, and then we just got to shift the scale so that this doesn't give us 0. It actually gives us 120. And this, of course, gives us 0 instead of minus 120. Now, that's not how you're usually going to see it. It's not how it's in the book. So let me use a little bit of those rules of logs here. First, let's just, multi let's just factor out the 10. And, ex and I'll explain why the 10's there. Notice this is called decibels. Well, deci means one-tenth. And if you actually have bells, that's sort of the original unit, that would be 14, 140 decibels is actually 14 bells. This is 13 bells, 12, 10, 8, 7, down to 0. And in f so then we wouldn't have need the, the 10. 
then going up one unit in the logarithm would actually be going up one bell. So that's why the tens there. It's to convert it from bells to decibels. Because these are nice, kind of nice numbers to, to do. If it was 0 to 14, you'd have to use a lot of decimals to describe sounds. And people just decided a long time ago they didn't like that. OK. So I'm going to rewrite this now inside as the log of i plus the log of 10 to the 12. This seems like a silly thing to do, maybe. But I want to rewrite it in a different way that's more agrees with what's in the book. And then I'm going to do something even a little weirder. Well, no, I'm, now I'm going to use log, log, rules of exponents. So this is log of i times 10 to the 12th. And here's a little bit of a weird step. It's Let's take the log of i, and I'm going to divide it by 10 to the minus 12. And let's see, why would I do that? It's because 10 to the minus 12 has a very big significance. It's exactly the threshold of hearing. So what I'm doing here, let me see if I can get them both on the same page. Oh, I can't. Let's see. Let me actually just uh, delete that and add it in as a different. Um, OK, maybe I can do it now. Uh, no. OK, I'm going to delete this since we don't need it anymore. OK, so here's what you'd see in the book, basically. So here's the idea. You take i, and you compare it to the threshold of hearing by ratios. Always when we're doing this side, we should do things comparing by ratios, by looking at division. So we take i and we compare it to the threshold of hearing. If it is at the threshold of hearing, we get 1. Log of 1 is 0, and you get 0 decibels, just like we want. 0 for the threshold of hearing, so that we don't have to use any negatives. Okay. And um, if i is bigger than the threshold of hearing, like i is the rustling leaves, 10 to the minus 11 over 10 to the minus 12, that's just 10. Log of 10 is 1. Multiply by 10 to, to convert from bells to decibels, and you got 10. So this is a nice way to think about it. You compare to the threshold. You make it into a log scale so that you have addition instead of multiplication. And so these numbers are much more manageable than these huge numbers, this huge variation from 1 trillionth to 100. And then just for convenience, you convert it into a, a slightly different unit, decibels instead of, instead of bells. So that's why this formula is correct. And if you look in the book, they just say i naught as a nice convenient abbreviation. So that's just the intensity for the threshold of hearing level. And if you have some other scale, you could have a, a variation of this by just taking any i naught that you want. And i doesn't even have to be in terms of watts per square meter. You just take whatever quantity, take some reference level that you want to be 0, divide them, take the log, and then if you want to, you can adjust the scale by putting in a factor here. Okay, So that's the decibel scale. And then you'll have some problems on just sort of straightforward calculations with this.